but we're going to talk about some Ollie Murphy horses first of all and, and look ahead to the festival. We've touched on the Supreme horses uh, already, but we'll look at them in a bit, a bit more detail. To be honest, the reason I, I put him off on that road to Cheltenham chasing fire is because I, I think ability-wise, he's got absolutely plenty of it. Whether or not you wish he'd, he, you'd, you'd been afforded a chance to take in a graded race or, already, I, I don't know. And whether or not you know, you're, you're sort of pitching him in deeper against your will here at, at this time of his career. But I think he's got lots of talent. What does he show you at home? Yeah, he's always been a horse. I've, I've loved Tom. I actually thought this day at Sandown was, uh, was the least impressive he's been. I thought he hated the ground, um, albeit he gave a penalty to, to Paul's horse that, that he seemed to like. Um, what was the ground on the day, I forget? Oh, it was just real horrible, tiring kind of Sandown soft ground, yeah. Um, just that real kind of type of ground that blunts your speed. Um, he's got loads of toe. I don't think you'll ever see him racing beyond two miles in my eyes. Um, I'd have loved to have dipped my toe in, in, in deeper waters, but uh, it just hasn't been the case where there's been a race suitable for him. So, uh, yeah, he's unbeaten from his point to point to, to winning a bumper, to winning three novice hurdles. And, yes, we're going to meet bigger and better opposition now, but I'm really looking forward to running him. I think he's got a good each way chance. I thought through the mid part of the race in Sandown was the most impressive couple of fellings I've seen of him to date. He kind of jumped into the bridle, going down the back and Aidan had to take him back. I just, I love seeing him go through that race on Sandown um, and I'd like to think he'll go through an even better race, better again. And what differences does he have to, to say a horse like Strong Leader? Were they, do they have similarities, differences? Yeah, they're, they're actually two very different horses. I think Chasing Fire is very much a, a horse for today for the simple fact is um, he's had a run the point to point. His jumping has come very naturally to him. Um, I think he's going to be a lovely, lovely chaser next year. Whatever he does this year is, you know, I'm saying a <laughs> bonus. But uh, listen, he's he's hopefully got a couple of big assignments ahead of him now with with, with Cheltenham and Aintree, and I'm really looking forward to him next year. Albeit, I think we've got a lot of unfinished business this year. But Wait, this is strong leader. This is, sorry, this is chasing fire. Chasing fire, um, right. and, and strong leader. I, jumping didn't come naturally to him to start with, at all. Um, he was all over the shop in Utoxta when he won first time out. He was a lot better this day. Um, the form of this race has worked out relatively well. Dan's horse ended up finishing second. Etalon bolted up since. Um, I think the winner won again for, or the horse in front won again for Warren Greatrex since. But you just even see him down towards the last year now. He doesn't not do something mad, but he just mm. he's just got a lot to a lot to learn still. I, I'm a little bit nervous that he might lack a little bit of experience in Cheltenham, but. He's improved with each run. He's got a big engine. His work's been good. Um, so you mean he, we worry about? Has he had three over hurdles? He has. He's so, had three so starts. Is, is it more his temperament that concerns you a little bit at this stage of his career for Cheltenham? He's got a great temperament. He'll right. take the day, absolutely a one. I just with his jumping, he's got better and better and better. But it's going to be a stern test for him now, running in a Supreme, when they go down to the first like the Clappers. Um, hopefully, he'll take it in his stride. But I think he's a horse that is only going to get better and better. The, 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 the key to the race, and interesting that you've got... Interesting you're running two in it. Were you, was it they're just both out and out two milers, are they? Or? Yeah, I, listen, I, I, I would have probably loved to have saved one for, for entry, but uh, Strong Lead is actually a great story. He's owned by a, a really good local family to me at home that, that uh, are local farmers, and they, they have our local golf clubs. So he's a homebred, which is obviously very special for, for them. Cheltenham's on their doorstep, and very hard to take that away from from someone that especially having a home bred that you're not to go to Cheltenham and wait for entry so mm. he deserves to take his chance he's bang up there with the best of the British I think and um, I'm looking forward to running him but I, I can really see this horse being competitive in some good hurdle races next year as well well that's the key if one of them is the best of the British great but and I don't want this to turn into a supreme preview but can you know this Fasal Vega shortened up a good bit in the last few days again for a supreme mm. and yet he blew out last time Cornelius so it just I don't know it just wouldn't wouldn't surprise you with this horse to just go and, 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 and bolt up at a Supreme, or, or would it? No, it wouldn't, that wouldn't be surprising in the least. And, you know, there are blips along the way for whatever reason, aren't there, uh, with, with lots of horses. But, there's, um, you know, it, there, there is every chance that, that this horse is going to be the, the wonder horse that people have been predicting that uh, it's been for it's going to be for some time. Cool. So, uh, the, the Supreme will get that roar at the start. Will get all everybody's blood going, whether it's jockeys or trainers or media people or r the the tens of thousands of race goers, and hopefully we'll have the the first of twenty eight um, intricate and uh, thrilling puzzles 
uh, to, to sort out. There'd be no surprise there if the solution to the puzzle was Fasol Vega. What is that moment like when that rule goes up and you're down at the at the start, down the bottom, still a fair way out? But is, does it make you go? Does it? It must give you a bit of a. Do you hear it? You can hear it, yeah. Mm. Um, and to be honest with you, you can hear that you're you're what half a mile away from them, but you can hear that. But yet when you go up to the line and everything else in the race, you can't hear anything else. It's, ama it's amazing. When the race is, when, yeah. when you're, when you're, un you when can, you're underway. You can hear that cheer at the start as you jump off. Yeah. And it's obviously a mad dash down to the first, but going past the winning line, going past with a circle of gore or whatever, you, you don't, you don't <coughs> hear the crowd, you don't hear anything. You're so focused. Concentrating so hard. Yeah. 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 But you, you can hear that roar at the start and everything. Counting one, There's two. There's a lot of people <laughs> go just for the roar. I nearly <laughs> brought up counting one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Thunder Rock. Uh, does he jump well enough? I think at three miles, I galloped him this week, and, and one thing about this horse, he doesn't gallop like he wants three miles, but he probably jumps like he does, if that makes sense. Um, I actually thought jump the second last here on Sandown. I thought he was going to whiz out by the horse in front and win, um, and he just flattened out, was beaten five and a half lengths in the end. Um, and listen, we all know National Hunt Race, and that's a good jump or two. Um, he's in very good form. He's been a, been a star for, for Max McNeil and, uh, and Ian Dale. And I just think slowing the emphasis of the race down will help his jumping. And he'll be ridden very patiently. I don't think there's going to be a massive field now in this race. Well, so hang on, do we know, is Jerry Colom is going there? So he will run, I just... He went racing this day now, and if the ground wasn't as slow as it was, I wasn't so sure he was going to run. So if it was very dry, I, 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 I don't know. Would he be a definite runner? I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't that's, that's the issue, isn't it? I haven't spoke to Gordon, but I thought there's a, a couple of willies kind of towards the top of the betting that could run the National Hunt Chase and uh, in the Turners as well. And one thing, I'd, uh, my lids are 12 to 1 shot, and Patrick Neville's horse is a 9 to 2 shot, and he beat me in the Dipper, obviously, on, on, on New Year's Day. And we never really got into a rhythm that day, and, and things didn't get a plan, and, and, and we were only beaten three lengths and had a torrid run round. So, I think wherever he finishes, we won't be too far behind him, if not in front of him. So uh, I'm looking forward to running him. He'll be dropped in, ridden to run well, and um, he's got an each way chance. Oh, they beat me, Ollie. <laughs> 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 they went a proper uh, gallop that day as well to suit Gordon's horse, didn't they, around Sandown? Yeah, they did. Um, and arguably, they, stayed, they, they actually set up for Gordon's horse in the end. Um, but he's very good. I think he's very, very oh. good, that Jerry Cologne. He's going to take up take a lot of beating and... Um, Did I read that Balco Coastal is going to go up to that trip as well? Or do, am, I, am I making that up? Could well and have it, done. It, and if he does, do we... Plenty you, of you, written. Do you think you were second best horse in that race? Sorry, in the... I, in the um, Silly Isles? I'd say I was third best horse in the okay. race, yeah. I, there was no excuse on right. the day. Um, they, 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 they kind of softened each other up up front and, 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 and kind of Gordon's horse came and won the race decisively. But I thought he was the horse to beat if he turned up and... They were talking that he could be a Gold Cup horse in time, and if he is, then he may well be the winner of that race. Uh, we've got a couple of we've got the handicap horses. You've touched on Itchy Feet as well. First of all, um, he, 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 how do you feel? How well treated do you think he is? Uh, he's probably up to up to his limit off his off his mark now. Um, uh, off his old chase form, he's probably still got seven or eight pounds to play with. But he's a couple of years older. Um, he's definitely a lot more comfortable back over hurdles. Ran very well in the Reynolds shop in his last start. And this, this is the, the grade one? This is, yeah, Gavin Rove, my, yeah. my one and only grade one winner this far. And, um, yeah, this was a good day, wasn't it? Very good, yeah. So uh, I suppose you were up by the winning lane as well, right? Um, I didn't realise that he pecked at that one. I'd, I'd, I'd sort of half forgotten that. Were you worried? No, I wasn't. I, I had so much horse underneath me. Um, and it's the only thing that he did. Um, he made every jump perfectly on the day. Everything went smooth. and. That was the only thing, it was just a peck and back of London, but as soon as they jumped the last, he took off. Mm. Yeah, that was, a, that was a seriously good day, wasn't it? Do you feel mm. like he's... Well, how do you assess his career since this point? He, he, he wasn't a natural over fences, and uh, he's actually a jockey's nightmare over fences. He, 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 he kind of draws you down to a fence, and he gets in underneath them and lands steep, and he's, he's not overly pleasant and doesn't get in a, a great rhythm. Um, Gavin smiling. Well, Gavin so happy as well, didn't you? We were just... Uh, <laughs> you, you know, him laughing at me. Yeah. Like, he, he was happy. So was he, the yeah. old, old whip. He, he, he's, After he's, the line. He's been a, he's been a star, um, and I'm delighted I came back over hurdles with him and uh, 
Nick Brown bought him off Andrew Brooks um, on, a, on an online sale and took a big punt mm. because a lot of people have said, oh, the horse has gone, he won't win again. And um, they've knocked a great amount of fun out of him this year. Second Reynolds show, won a per temps qualifier. And he's going to go to Cheltenham now with a, with a little each way chance in a per temps. So, uh, Fingers crossed. Yeah. Any others going to Cheltenham? The Wolf might run in the Ultima or the, or the Kim Muir. Listen, the, the, the Wolf now is one of these horses. The <laughs> talking of, <laughs> talking of, well, no, so I don't want to call him a jockey's nightmare at all, but he's, he's quirky, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he'll take offence with him. Yeah. Um, touch wood, I don't think he'll ever fall, but uh, he's one of those now. He will land one day at the back of the last and win a good handicap. And I'm listening, I'm not saying that's going to be a Kim Muir or an Ultima, but he's mm. got all the ability in the world and he won't shock me the day he wins a good handicap. Um, but I would say that's about me. I have a very, very good horse sent in the in the bumper, but it would have to be heavy ground for him to run. Of Who's that? Max McNeil's and Greg Stone's called Fingal Bridge. Yeah. Um, he was second on debut and then bolted up at Chepstow, but he's a real staying horse who's going to want real soft ground. I don't think we're going to get that. OK, will he run again this season? He may well have one more run, but the heavens are going to need to open. He could be a real good staying novice early for next season. How many horses you got? I think we're running about 120 at the moment. So, right. yeah, no, we're, we're busy. We've had a lot of nice bump winners this year and um, yeah, the future's looking bright. And Is it fair to say that you sort of, how many, you, what, what you f six years in? Five, five, five years four in. seasons in, yeah. Um, and rebuild isn't quite right, but you, you've had to generate those young horses again coming through. Year on year, I know, but it feels like there's been another injection of slightly ab above average ones. Yeah, 100%. We're all doing the same thing, Tom. We're all looking for, for good horses and they're not easy to come by and you've got to be well supported, which which I continue to be. And um, we've some nice horses coming through the ranks. We've a couple of horses going to, to Cheltenham this year with live chances in, in, in grade one novices. And I think that just shows kind of where we are going or where we're building towards. And um, yeah, it just takes a, a, a little bit of time and I put more pressure on myself than anyone. And I know where I want to be and I want to be there now. <laughs> I, I don't want to be there next year. But so, so, um, so where is that? Because your strike rate's pretty consistent, but are you talking about the more top level horses? Yeah, listen, I want to be competing on Saturdays. You want to be winning big races. You want to be contesting big prize money. And um, it comes, and listen, we are. We are having plenty of Saturday winners and graded winners and whatnot. But uh, you look at Nicky and Paul and, 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 and Dan and whatnot, and been around a while, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you, I'm 31, I, I just want it all to happen now and hopefully I'll be around for a, for, for a long time and I'm five years in and you just want these good horses straight away but you have to, you have to make them, you know. So what would set them, other than they've been around for a while, those three you've mentioned, to your mind what sets, if, if, if you're setting them apart, what does that? Um, they're obviously very good at their job. Um, they're extremely well supported. They've been around for obviously Nick and Paul are, are longer than Dan, but they've been around for a, for, for, for a long time. Uh, they've got good horses to train and, and they've got good budgets to play with. But I, I, I admire the three of them along with plenty of other trainers in the UK. But they're, they're three trainers at the moment, I think, that are a good way apart from from a lot of others in, in where they're contesting big races on a on a Saturday and ultimately you can train as many winners as you want from Monday to Friday but on a Saturday in England is, is, is where you win your money and, uh, and you get noticed. So Dan and, and Paul and Nicky, they, summer racing's oblivious to them now really. It, it gets everyone going, it got me going. I, I tried to step away from that a little bit this year and numbers wise it's probably cost me 15 or 20 winners this season because I took a step back from summer racing. I don't, I don't bemoan summer racing, I still enjoy having 15 or 20 horses in through the summer and I still have horses for those people that supported me since day one and I, I, I don't regret doing what I did but I'm just trying to go up to that next level should mm. we say and um, I think if you're going to do that you've got to relinquish those 20 boxes of so-called bad horse to hopefully make way for a good horse that can come in. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com